Hello, this is Bob McClellan. In this screencast, I will demonstrate a sample program that generates a new spreadsheet, including cell styles. Now, in my, one of my previous examples, I also showed generation of spreadsheet data, but I found out that that method, which was setting one cell at a time in the XML, was really very slow. I had reports from people about that, so I came up with a new way of building the whole structure in memory very quickly and then writing out the XML in one shot. So I'll show you how to do that. Now this will start with it just demonstrating how to use the sample code to generate the spreadsheet and then in the second half I'm going to show the details of how that all that XML is generated and everything. So if you're not interested in the actual coding part of it, the actual coding of the XML generation, you can just skip that part. All right, so here we go. So it, this example was meant to demonstrate how to create a pivot table, and it still does that. But I'm going to focus this time on the source data for that pivot table, because that's the one that shows this new way of generating the data. Now, the first half of this example program uh, used an existing document and filled in the data from pivotdata.txt. But it was using this call. This Both halves used to use these set cell value calls from the worksheet accessor. And those would, one at a time, add in that cell to the existing worksheet. The new method works differently. And this is the also the create, creating from scratch. So it creates the new document as it did before. Uh, now I'm going to show you the, the first thing in here is it creates the default styles which I'll show you how that works in too. But the creating the default styles creates a style part in the workbook so that we can actually access styles by name, by the standard names you usually see in Excel. The most important part here is where it says memory spreadsheet. That is a new class that I created. It's, uh, it's in the worksheet accessor module or file. And it, creates, it just creates a new memory spreadsheet. And then I start going through pivotdata.txt again. But this time, it's, it looks almost the same, you'll see. Uh, I'm going through all the items, and instead of calling the static set cell value as I was before, I'm now calling a, a, a very similar set cell value function that appears in the uh, memory spreadsheet that I created. And it sets, you know, keeps track of all those cell, cell values that you're setting. And, as a bonus, the other half of this example is that you can specify a style index. And this style index, I'm using a call to get style index, which I created that new function in, also in the worksheet accessor file or module. That will, I can give it the document and a style name, and it'll give me the index back again. And if it needs to, it'll create the entry it needs to index and return it. So that ac can actually modify the uh, style part when you make that call. Even though it says get, it can it sometimes has to add stuff in order to get it. And so I just, just to show this example, I said if the item is accessories, then I'm going to set it to the good style. And if it's south, I'll set it to bad style. And then when that is all done, I have a new static function in, again, in worksheet accessor module to set the sheet contents from the memory spreadsheet. And so it does. It just sets the, the entire contents to that, uh, whatever's in that, whatever I've done set cell values for above. And it does it all in one shot. And it turns out to be considerably faster as a one or at least one, maybe two blog responders said to me, I said, wow, this really runs slow. You could do it better. And they were right. Uh, I don't, I did, I did my own method, but I'm sure there are lots of ways to do this. And then the rest of it is all the pivot table stuff, which I'm not going to talk about here. So let's run this example. And it's going to create new pivot.xlsx very, very fast, even though that it, you can't tell much difference with the size of the pivot data that I'm using here, but if you make it a lot bigger, you can really tell the difference between the two methods. Okay, and so I can then open up 
this spreadsheet. And you can see I have my good and bad style formats on there, just like that. So if that is all you need, is to be able to say, oh, I can use that code and set my values, then you're all set. You can just skip the rest of this, but I'm going to go on and show how this all is actually done, because some of you want to know that. First, let's look at the create default styles, because that's really pretty simple. It's all just tucked in here. All I do is add a new workbook styles part, and then I set it in bulk, basically, from the entire text. I just parse the uh, XML text and set it into that document. You can see it has a bunch of font settings, fills, borders, and then down at the bottom are all the cell styles by name, including good and bad. And the important thing about styles, uh, I'll, this is a, a little bit confusing if you haven't seen it before, Notice good has an XFID of 6, and bad has an XFID of 7. And what that refers to is, and these XFIDs are not the cell XFS or XFs block IDs. They're the cell style XFs. And so if we look here, and go starting at zero, count down to number six or seven. Those would be the uh, values for good and bad. But in order to actually reference them, they have to appear in the cell XFs down below. So let's take a look at the get style index method that turns, you know, change, takes the style name and creates the or finds the proper index or creates a new one. So it's going to start by looking at the styles part, of course. This next nice little link to XML query is going to find the XFID for the style name that matches. Uh, so it's looking in the cell styles and all of the cell style elements within that and finds a node or a, an element where the name matches and then gets the XFID attribute. That XFID then will either be found in the cell XFS block, which is what I look at next as I try to get the index of the XF element within there. And if it's not found, the index will be returned as a minus one. And so then I need to create a new element. Creating the element is a matter of getting the cell style. Uh, the X, that XFID is an index into the uh, cell style XFS block. So I get that element, and then I copy over, essentially copy over the num format ID, font ID, fill ID, border ID, and the XFID into that new cell XFS, or the XF element within cell XFS. If, it, if I've made the change, if I've made an addition, I put that X document back so that it's now part of the, the actual spreadsheet, and then return the new index. So it's a little bit of work, but not bad at all, considering how complicated this can get. And uh, this is a pretty straightforward part. I'm not doing any uh, additional formatting or styling. And I plan to do some more on that in the near future. So keep looking for more examples. So let's go back to my memory bulk load. So I have my memory spreadsheet class. And what I'm trying to do here is just represent the cells in a spreadsheet in a way that makes it easy to generate the XML as well. And so the simplest way I thought to do this was to use a sorted list. That way it's easy for me to find the rows by number. And so it's a sorted list indexed by in, an integer, and uh, the object is a memory row. We'll get to that in a minute. But you can imagine the memory row contains memory cells 
which it does. And so when I go to set a cell value, and I have two versions, one with the style index and one without, I just look to see, do I have a row with that number? If I don't, I add it. I create a new memory row. Once I have the memory row, then I can set the cell, which is a method on the memory row. And, uh, and I just do that by also creating a new memory cell. There's a lot of ways this could be done, but this is just the way I decided to design it. The other one with the index is the same, except it creates a memory cell with the style index also. I have get cell value. We'll skip that. It's not being used yet. And I thought we might use that later. But if you know, if you want to, it is in there if you want to do something more complicated where you're looking at the values in addition to just setting them. The memory row also uses a sorted list. It, also, it needs to contain the row numbers. So I need that when I'm generating the result. Uh, but the sorted list contains cells with the column number as an integer. So when I set a cell, all I have to do is check to see if it contains a cell. If it, do, if it already contains it, then I remove it. That doesn't come up in this example. Otherwise, it just adds the new cell element. And then there's the memory cell. It's just storing the column number, the values stored in the cell, and then the style index. And if that style index is zero, that's normally uh, an, an index that doesn't get written out into the XML, so we would just ignore it then. OK, and so now the get elements I've been skipping over. Now, get elements actually generates the result. So if we look at the get elements for the whole spreadsheet, it's going to create a root element for, with the sheet data and then go through each item and get, you know, add the, the elements from that. And so for the row, we look at that and it creates a new row element with the row number in the, as an extra attribute, which it needs. And then it gets the elements for all of the cells. And then the cells get elements will generate the, all the attributes you need for the cell, like the cell reference. It uses a, an existing function that I've had in here that uh, converts the column into a letter value instead of the number. So that you can put the cell reference in there. And then it checks types so that it generates the proper element for that data type, Boolean or a string or a numeric value. and. Then right at the end, there's the style index. If the style index is not zero, it adds on an attribute for the style index. So really pretty straightforward. And that's it. I mean, that uh, when we go to the worksheet accessor, static functions, uh, I have the set, set sheet contents. And you can see it's really simple. It gets the do X document for the worksheet. It replaces it with the get elements from my memory spreadsheet, and then puts the X document. So all of the real functionality is in those get elements calls that are uh, calling down through there and creating all the XML or the X elements that are put in there. So that it just makes it go quite a bit faster. They, if you haven't seen the old approach, the the set cell value was doing a whole bunch of stuff where it had to go through, find an element. If it wasn't there, it inserts before or after, and all that stuff, uh, you know, gets, and the same with the cells. It gets pretty complicated to do that bit by bit all the way through. So doing it in memory like that went a lot faster. Now, of course, there's other elements or attributes that can be put on all these things, so I'll be expanding this at a later time. But that gives you the overview of how I did my bulk load or fast load or quick load of spreadsheet data. Hope you found it interesting.